Frenchman on the ground in Tonga. Mr. Fitch, welcome. Can you hear me, please? I can hear you. Thank you very much. You have the floor. Please go ahead. Okay, I'm Good sorry. From Fiji, Thank you very much. I hope you Thank you very much. Um, I'm Jonathan Beach. Uh, apologies if I was slightly late. Um, the resident, I'm the resident coordinator at Interim, based in in Fiji, and I'm accredited to to Fiji, the Solomon Islands, Tonga, Tuvalu, and Vanuatu, and I'm also head of the UNICEF Pacific office uh, in the Pacific, um, based out of Fiji. Um, uh, the resident, the regular resident coordinator, is uh, coming back from leave. Uh, first off, I'd like to clarify just quickly that um, that all UN staff in Tonga are accounted for and are safe. The UN has one international staff and 22 national staff across eight entities uh, based in Tonga. And um, we're um, stepping up our efforts now to coordinate the, the response to the, to the tsunami, to the events of the last few days. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of a briefing on this. I'm pleased to report, and you probably will have seen that last night, the government managed to release their first official update um, following the eruption. Uh, in the update, it confirms um, that initial damage assessment has begun, and these are managed by the National Emergency Management Committee, which we're coordinating with um, uh, very closely, who are meeting on a daily basis um, to discuss and approve the uh, response operations and planning. Um, it does confirm, as you as you will already have, have known, and the difficulties that we've all been facing, that communications, both national and international, have been severed uh, due to damage sustained by the submarine cables. Uh, the internet um, remains down as of this morning, um, and only as of yesterday, some slight uh, uh, communication was established with some of the outer islands through satellite phones and and HF radios. The government uh, has managed to dispatch a couple of uh, search and rescue operations uh, that began on, on Sunday morning. Um, and unfortunately, there do um, remain a number of injuries reported post-tsunami. There's a health team that uh, uh, has been sent now out to Harpai uh, because of the destruction of the health facilities there. So with materials um, and support from from the UN, WHO is there on the ground and supporting it. Um, a health team is in Hapai now uh, and setting up a, a kind of temporary clinic to see uh, how to support. Um, so the, the health team is there and they have some relief items, including water, uh, food and tents. Um, and yesterday, another ship was sent to um, uh, a second island with additional resources. Um, sadly, as you will have seen, uh, perhaps on satellite images, um, it seems that houses, all houses were destroyed on Mango Island, and we have to count exactly how many that is and, and exactly what the population was that's been displaced and evacuated. And only two houses remain on Fonuifa Island. And, and there is also extensive damage uh, recorded on Namuka Island. The, Evacuation pro uh, process has also uh, begun, and the government is supporting that uh, from Atata to Tonga Tapu to, to the main island and from Mango Island, um, as I mentioned. So challenges remain um, due to the damage sustained by the, by the ash and the heavy amount of ash that's been uh, falling. All domestic and international flights have been deferred and for, until further notice. The clearing up operation uh, continues and has made quite good progress in the in the airport, but is still not sufficient to be able to land um, uh, to land aircraft. Our priorities um, remain uh, to establish uh, communication, immediate shelter needs, and su uh, supporting access to safe water. Um, you in Tonga Tapu itself, on the main island, the government reported that. 100 houses were damaged and 50 destroyed. Uh, you will also have heard of the deaths of two uh, national, uh, one international, one other national yesterday, and now, unfortunately, a third uh, national has been reported to have been killed um, 
as well. Most people are staying, uh, who've been evacuated from their homes are staying um, with families, with extended families, uh, except on the island of Ewa, where around uh, 90 people are in evacuation uh, centers there. Um, communication is a real, real key, and with looking at how we can continue to improve that, we got slightly better comms uh, yesterday. I'm able to send basic messages from by SMS uh, now uh, to our colleagues uh, through satellite systems. Um, and we hope very soon that um, comms will be back uh, up and running. Um, support from neighboring donors in particular has been very rapid and, and swift, um, particularly Australia and New Zealand. They've been really helpful and quick. And both are uh, deploying their defense ships HMS, HMAS Adelaide um, and uh, the Ayatora and Wellington from New Zealand to provide immediate relief <coughs> and urgent equipment. And the good thing is that those ships not only have a lot of supplies on them and they carry also a lot of our water and sanitation supplies that I'm pleased to say were picked up in Brisbane uh, uh, yesterday. Um, but they have the ability to provide clean water, um, uh, desalination plants on the on the ships. They can clean water from the sea, um, and they're also carrying a lot of uh, potable water as well. So um, it's still early days. It's been a very challenging um, challenging time because of the poor communication system that we have with um, with Tonga. Uh, we hope that. Once it gets up and running, uh, we'll be able to uh, find out a lot more. Uh, the team are working nonstop with the government to to try and assess, um, and I think we'll get a lot more details today. The government are still uh, are not in a position to release their accurate needs, but we're basically doing a um, uh, sending supplies there, knowing what uh, is probably required in terms of water and sanitation, shelter, and other, other supplies too. And luckily we have those assets from the New Zealand and Australian uh, governments that enable that. Uh, and then they're all, they've also got aircraft that are ready, already, already uh, ready to take off. And those will leave as soon as the airport is um, uh, completely cleared. Um, so I think I'll stop there and uh, open up for any uh, comments or questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Edie, please. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Veach. Uh, Edith Lettera from the Associated Press. On behalf of the United Nations Correspondents Association, thank you very much for doing this briefing. Um, first, um, is there any indication of how long more it will take to get the airport open because I assume once it's open, the UN will be sending in uh, more people, supplies, etc. And secondly, you mentioned the names of a lot of islands that none of us are very familiar with. Um, could you <laughs> could you spell? Uh, the names of the islands that you mentioned, you started out with something that sounded like Hakai, and then there was Mango and something else, and then there was another island that I think began with an A. Yes. Uh, thank you for your questions. Um, indeed, the clear-up operation, one of the priorities was the... Uh, is the airport, obviously, but the ash has proven more difficult to clear than was expected. Um, we thought that it would be operational yesterday, um, and but it hasn't been fully cleared yet because more ash has been falling. Um, and so they clear about 100 or 200 meters per day, I, I gather, uh, which means they should get there um, uh, today. Um, I don't know if it'll be fully operational today. I know that the Australians are sending equipment that can kind of uh, water blast uh, the runways 
uh, to make sure that it's cleaned very quickly. But that, that equipment is in the ship, so the ship will take six to eight days. So that's, that, that can't be used, um, that can be used longer term, but it can't be used uh, immediately. So the clear up operation continues in the airport and we hope that we can land there very soon. I want to be clear on um, one thing that um, uh, the, 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 we, we believe that we will be able to send flights with supplies. We're not sure that we can send flights with uh, personnel. Uh, and the reason for this is that um, uh, Tonga has a very strict um, COVID-free uh, policy. They're one of the few countries in the world that's remained uh, COVID-free. They've done a great job in terms of immunization. They have very high vaccination rates that we've been supporting over the last two years through COVAX and other means. And they have 90% coverage now, both in adults and also younger people, not, not the youngest, not kids, but over the age of 12. So they've got very good uh, uh, coverage, but they've been very cautious about opening their borders like many Pacific islands are. Uh, because of the history of disease outbreaks in the Pacific, which have wiped out uh, societies here. They do have very strict uh, protocols, much stricter than other countries in terms of um, opening their borders to a large extent, apart from Fiji, which took a different uh, approach. Um, so that, that discussion with opening the border to people is something that we need to have and that WHO will will initiate with the government in a cautious manner, but we won't be doing anything to threaten the safety of their protocols and the safety of their population in terms of the COVID, because that would cause us a lot more difficulties, in fact, than we already have. Um, so we may need to do the operation very much um, remotely um, through the government and through local organizations, which is fine. And we have 23, 22, 23 people on the ground who can do this um, uh, and run this operation for us, plus many international and local NGOs. So I think we're in a good, uh, a good uh, position there. In terms of the islands, I mean, I, I think that it would take me a long time to spell them all out. If you don't mind, perhaps the uh, UN office there could issue the list of the islands uh, uh, to you that has been issued by the government, and then you can get the spelling from that. Yes, uh, we can do it after the briefing. Thank you. Uh, Thank James. you. That would be great. James, please. James Bays from Al Jazeera. Thank you for doing this. Um, can I first check uh, the list of islands that you're going to mention, all the outlying islands? Are you now sure that everywhere has been searched and checked, or is there anywhere from which is inhabited where you don't have information, where you're still where you're still unsure what the casualty figures might be. And secondly, on water, what is the situation with regard to fresh water supplies currently on Tonga, on the main island and elsewhere, and how much of a priority is that? So first of all, I can't, I cannot confirm that every settlement has been assessed. Um, the the uh, government was only able to get out yesterday and the day before to some of the islands. I sent out a Tongan Navy ship to to a Navy vessel to look at the situation on the outer on the outer islands, and there's more than a hundred islands in in Tonga. Not all of them are inhabited. Uh, but you, I, I don't think that I would be able to say that we can confirm that nobody else has been affected. If you saw the government um, <clears throat> statement, they kind of made it clear that they haven't got to some of the further islands yet, uh, but um, those um, islands may be sufficiently far away from the tsunami anyway not to have been affected too, uh, too badly. Um, so we can't fully confirm that there won't be further damage, there won't be further um, um, reports of casualties. Um, but uh, at least the, the ones that they were most worried about 
um, which I mentioned, Mango and Fonoy, they have been visited, and we know that uh, there's been quite heavy devastation. In terms of water, reports, well, first of all, um, groundwater sources are okay, and they're, um, they're fine, generally speaking. Not everybody has pumps to be able to use uh, groundwater sources, so they may need to go to a health facility or a school or something like that to get, or, or a neighbor to get their water. But, they, but because they use um, uh, rainwater sources um, uh, normally. Um, so we are concerned about the, about the water situation. I haven't heard that people have run out of water, which would be obviously an emergency uh, situation. Of course, we have heard that shops are running out of food um, and also uh, there's been quite a lot of kind of mass purchasing um, uh, as always happens in these circumstances, including of water and of food supplies uh, too. So the sooner the regular market uh, movement uh, can start and we can get ships going back into the ports to deliver uh, all of the supplies that they regularly do uh, from New Zealand, Australia and elsewhere, uh, and the market system starts functioning again in terms of delivery of, of uh, vegetables and so on to markets, uh, the better. Um, but uh, so, so it is urgent and we need, do need to, there is a desalination plant in, in, uh, in, um, in Tonga, uh, in the capital, and that's being checked now to make sure that it's functioning and, and all, is, all is well. Um, and I'll have further information on the absolute extent of water shortages um, uh, uh, very soon. Thank you very much. Any other questions online? If you have, Edie, one more question. Yeah, one more question. Uh, thank you. What's the status of the port, and is it viable for ships to dock? We understand it is viable to, for ships uh, uh, to dock. Uh, I haven't heard that there is damage along the coastline, and there is damage of the port, uh, and so on, but it's not sufficient to prevent ships from uh, docking there. So I suspect that um, uh, both the Australian Navy and the uh, New Zealand uh, Navy will be able to dock their ships uh, in the coming days when they arrive. The New, Zealand's are, or New Zealand ships are already on the way, and the, the very large HMAS Adelaide is, is going to complete its um, um, you know, filling of, uh, of all the supplies and so on uh, today, and I believe set sail tomorrow. Thank you very much. I think that's it. We don't have any more questions. Thank Mr. Vich, thank you very much for your time and for making this briefing so early in the morning in Fiji. Thank, thank you very much, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thank you for having me.